everything on a geopolitical scale that consequently has happened in the last 10 years is because that we hear from their point of view because of 9-11. How can we forget it? How can That's we fine. forget these trillions whatever it is, of, of, of dollars and, and all the rest of it, NATO getting involved, European countries That's right. involved That's right. in these wars. I mean, it's for, for, forgetting about it, forget about that. You know, no way. Right. This forget is about a, that and we may as well give up and say we have no control and we have no responsibility for correcting what has gone wrong in human society. And I'm saying no way. It's not going to go away in September 2011, which is a new 9-11. Yeah. It's going... I see the possibility and the opportunity for the breakthrough that 9-11 really presents. And that is where we come around to the solution. First of all, I urge everyone to read the Not in His Image and to read the story in the first six chapters about the rise of the Zadokim sect of the ancient Hebrews. The Zadokim sect was the religious fanatics of the Dead Sea, and they carried the iconic virus that is now mutated into a global pathology. None of the secrecy and manipulation and deception that we see in a mass scale on this planet could happen if that infection had not taken place. And that infection has to be lanced like an abscess. And it may not be a pretty thing to do, but when that, when that infection is lanced, and when the source of that infection is identified, then the great healing of humanity can occur. And that is now. That is right now. That's not in the future. And the Gnostics pointed out, if you want to know who has those devices, okay, you and I are having this conversation. People are listening to this. And as they listen to it, what, whether this week, next week, or next month, at the very moment you're listening to this, somebody has those devices who are they? Yeah. The Gnostics gave us an idea of who they are. Do you realize that? C can I just ask you a uh, quick jump? Do you think sure. that the 9-11 event was orchestrated from an uh, archontic consciousness, if you will, that, that the plan, because uh, you, you can analyze it from different points of view, and, and in some regards it seems to be, a very shoddy, very poorly executed uh, event. On another right. level, if you study certain things within the event that happened, it seems beyond brilliance. You know, the surrounding events, the the That's fact right. that the, recently I put up on the website the fact what what these children were were chanting in the classroom where Bush was sitting, reading the story of the goat upside down. The book there, right? Kite hit. Uh, steel, plain, must, you know, like right. what the hell is going on there? It seems like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's something else. It's a, it's a, 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 a d dark ritual that was performed, and it seems no. like it must come from a different kind of uh, no, consciousness. It's not a dark orchestrated ritual. I don't believe. One of the things that we need to be very careful about regarding both the archonic powers and the archontically infected human beings, that is, the predators, the interspecies predators and psychopaths who are running around on this planet. We need to approach them both with great vigor, with great, first of all, great courage that they can be defeated. But we need not to over-attribute to them. I strongly believe, and I would have to give, you would have to have another interview with me, perhaps for me to get, make a convincing case of it. But I'm really uh, of the view that there's a large tendency among certain people who are exposing the New World Order mind programming orchestration to over-attribute it, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to say that these psychopaths have this, these satanic rituals and they do it. No, they're just like serial killers. They like to do things ritualistically. But as a matter of fact, what makes the whole thing so dangerous is not their magical power, but it's the contagion, the contagion of confusion. In the contagion of confusion, we all become suggestible. That's right. And in that contagion of confusion that is like the cloud of confusion and deception around these beings is that we unwittingly start to manufacture things in our minds that contribute in a way to the magic that they are trying to perpetrate on mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Interesting. And we so must be very skillful to avoid that danger. And one of the best ways to get out of that danger is to read 
what the Gnostics said about the people who are today the heirs and final heirs of the original vector of the Arconic virus. Because it is the people who are the heirs of that vector who have these weapons and intend to use them against humanity and wipe out the human race. But I have to point out that they are insane. And one of the things that, one of the reasons why I'm strongly urging now that we spend less time on the solution, uh, less time on the problem and more time on the solution, right. is that there's a huge risk in going into the solution and going down one rabbit hole after another. Because as a matter of fact, if you're playing chess with a psychotically insane person, you will never be able to understand their moves. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. And it's very dangerous for us to, you know, the Gnostics warned in crystal clear language, they, they told us the M.O. of the Archons, Heinrich, and the M.O. of the Archons is the M.O. of the Zadokim cult, and it is the M.O. of the people today who have these weapons. And that is, it is a plan of absurdity and senselessness. It's a plan, but it's absurd. They will throw anything at us to keep us occupied with the things that they consider to be, well, it doesn't really matter, actually, at the end of the day, well, whatever they consider to be what we should spend our, our time on or not. It's, it's a, it's a, that's a, a, another aspect to the magical, you know, the ritual that you mentioned in that sense, that, that keep us confused or busy or occupied with whatever little, co you know, um, thing that they've created for us to, to obsess about. In, in one sense. I, would, I would suggest this point as a point of warning. If you want to investigate the planetary predators and the, and the people who are uh, perpetrating lies, deception, and manipulation that is throwing our world into chaos, go ahead. But bear in mind that use the analogy. Watch the film Manhunt, which is the prequel to The Silence of the Lambs. Rent that film, Manhunt, and watch that film. And it shows you how the detective who is tracking down a serial killer, almost goes insane. Yeah. Because he has to put himself in the mindset of the serious killer in order to catch it. Hmm, that's right. Now, that's a very dangerous game. And they and the serial killer knows that. Serial killers love to play with codes. They love to lay down rituals. They love to lay down a trail of breadcrumbs. Because while you're walking along and sniffing along the trail of breadcrumbs and figuring out the latest code that they use, they are perpetrating more crimes. And so I warn all of you who want to track down and expose these criminals and these perpetrators, do not get involved in that because you won't reach the goal. It only is to their advantage. It's time to turn to the solution. And the solution is twofold, as presented by the challenge of 9-11. One responsibility is to recognize and face the facts that those buildings did not fall, that they were turned to dust by free energy devices. The inference, therefore, is that free energy devices exist, and this is the moment for our civilization to claim that technology and find it and bring it out. Because with a free energy technology in this world, we're not going to have a perfect world. We're never going to have a society. There will be conflicts. There will be differences. Sure. But we will have a much fairer world, and we will have a fair chance to create a cooperative and compassionate society of mutual aid. And that is in line with Sophia's vision for our experiment. Sophia is an aeon from the divine Polaroma. And I can tell you that when we come to understand the physics of the galaxy we're in, the relation of the core of the Pleroma to the galactic arms, in that understanding is the recognition that the Pleroma and the galaxy we're in is a free energy system. We live in a free energy system. True physics is a free energy system. And those parts of the physical world that don't appear to be are just exceptions to the general rule. So, the beauty of the universe is that it is by and large 
founded on a free energy physics. And Sophia, being a divine being, being an instrument herself of divine intelligence, wants her pet species to discover that magic, that it is withheld from us and that it is used by an, a tiny fragment of genocidal maniacs is what is the great crime that we must face. And that is why 9-11 is the turning point and cannot be forgotten. John, I mean, it's also interesting how they've turned this on its head. I mean, energy, I've also argued that energy is everywhere in the in the cosmos. It's everywhere around us. It's 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 an abundance, yet That's right. here on this planet, we're basically at this point now being asked to shut down our, our, our society and, 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 you know, put on a sweater if it's cold because because Gaia is dying, right? They've, they've it's a really, complete fraud. Yeah, and I also want to point out that this term, ecofascism, which is a very good term, ecofascism is the false plea to Gaia and save the Earth. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Al Gore, uh, Maurice Strong, uh, all those people are accessory to this madness in their own way. And they are promoting a complete hoax. It's a complete hoax. And it's only a pretext. They don't care about the earth. They don't know Gaia. They don't love the earth. And all it's just a hoax for stealing and controlling the resources of the world. That's right. And it is time to face this frontally. Frontally. And with the, uh, the evidence that, uh, uh, that Judy Wood presents, I think that there is a fantastic opportunity to uh, find the real truth of the 9-11 truth movement. Let the controlled opposition fall away. And let the real truth emerge. And let people ask themselves and each other and ask their governments, you know, well, if our scientists are so brilliant and our engineers are so wonderful, then how come they're not presenting our society with free energy systems since we know they exist because they were used to bring down, to not bring down, see there I go. Yeah. <laughs> they were used to destroy those towers. That's right. This is where we go. So it's a great breakthrough. So the breakthrough comes from us, but the breakthrough is also coming from Gaia Sophia. And I'd like to wind up our talk on a more positive note by mm -hmm. t telling about how that's coming about, right. if I may. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Well, you know, as I said, Heinrich, I, I, I restored the Gnostic myth, the Gaia mythos, if you will, and I called it the scenario of the, of the fallen goddess scenario, because that's what it was typically called. Fallen goddess means that a powerful entity, a divine being in the galactic center, uh, fell out of the galactic center, which, which the aeons, or inhabiting gods of the galactic center normally don't do, and fell into the realm of physics and materiality of the galactic limbs and got involved in planetary evolution. And that is the story of our Pan, the planetary animal mother. And, and when I told that story, I retold it in nine episodes, I ended up and I said the ninth episode is the moment of Gaia's correction. Gnostics didn't say what that was, but we're going to find out when it happens. And I left it open. And then people wrote me and they said, oh, things are so bad, you know, the Sophia story is so beautiful. And if she's here, if she is alive, if she is aware, then is she going to do something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. What's she going to do, John? Is she going to intervene, you know? What's going to happen? And it's sort of like that moment in Avatar, remember? When Jake turns to Netiri. And, you know, the, 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 the military industrial complex is coming, right? Mm. They're coming with their flotilla of spaceships and all their heavy arms, right? And they're going to destroy the natural habitat of the uh, Pangaeans, Pandorans, right? Right. And Jake says, you know, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Let's go to Ewa, who is the uh, avatar equivalent of Gaia, okay, the mother goddess. Let's go to Ewa and ask her to help.